covenant. This is Jeremiah. Let's get going. We have our Bibles here. We, we usually have two Bibles open here. This is New Covenant Ministries. I'm Jeremiah. This is Jeremiah Michael Pearson, and we are getting uh, into popcorn again today. Uh, we're going to make that our main uh, modus operandi, and we look forward to having that as our primary uh, mode of transportation, okay? And I'm looking forward to, to having, and we, we lost our format here, which is your dictionary might call a metastable, which is a slight margin of stability, which we do indeed have here, and I have to be very careful. I need a more permanent situation there, but we'll deal with it as we move along here. Jeremiah, are you on fire? We've got work to do, people. We've you know, we, we've got a country to save, as they say here in the political realm. You know, we, we've got people that we want to um, reach. Uh, what's that, Luke chapter 6? No, Luke chapter 4. You know, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That, so that's what we're here for, right? What's one of the cornerstone scriptures of your Bible? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Okay, that's monstrous, isn't it? It sure is. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Stop right there. See, one of the main goals we have here is to help people who are hurting and in trouble. That's, that's one of the main goals we have here. These videos are here for, for you to, many of you out there, you're hurting, you've been through difficult situations, relationships, marriages or something, uh, engagements, or you, some of you have just been in car accidents. We just saw a horrible accident over here, and, uh, and uh, I think the police officer was in shock. But here's my point, because it was evidently horrible or something. I, I, here's my point. We're here to help people who are not in big trouble and those who are. So, and uh, and, and when heal the the brokenhearted. Woo! And to preach deliverance to the captives. So we, this ministry focuses on heavy hitters. Now, some of you are going to wonder. Are, are we ever going to branch out and so forth? No, we, we do branch out here quite a bit. However, the word deliverance is monstrous here in this ministry or in any Protestant ministry. Because you're going to take people from a very tough situation and you're going to place them in a much better place. And we do that by grace and we do that by grace, mercy, peace, and, and rest number four here, okay? You're going to be graced and mercy. And, and, and uh, number 20 is grace plenty. So uh, you're going to get graced plenty here. You're going to be taken to, from a place that was not that good at all to a place that is good. Okay? And the Spirit of the Lord is upon our Master who you love and we love here to do that. And he did that to you and I and we're supposed to be a domino effect and get out there and do it to them. Now, some of you may think that we're, we're, we're a little too elementary and so forth. I don't think so, and that's the way, that's the way this ministry goes here. I, I, I like to focus on the basics here over and over. Now, for those of you who are you know, hungry for uh, you know, some other ideas, some other teachings, and all the way from Ahab and Jezebel to who knows who, uh, Gideon, but uh, until I am satisfied with hammering home the basics, I will not spend that much time on these um, auxiliary situations. Uh, you know, that's why we have 52 plus categories here. I mentioned how important the word deliverance was. Um, your Bible mentions it, and it is an extremely significant term that is basically a part of general sound doctrine, okay? And that's what it is. And 24 in this ministry is called war. There's a war here, and the devil has been given 
mankind as his own, essentially. And the war is for us to go out there and to take those who, who are under this power and to deliver them. That's, that, that's why the word is deliver. We just read that, right? But you say that Luke 6, 19, I'm sorry, 6, 18 is a, is a big scripture in your Bible. Obviously, an Isaiah cross-reference, it, it, it is monstrous, people. This is, this is where the rubber meets the road here. This is evangelism. This is, you know, get out there and love people and so forth, and, and you're going to heal the brokenhearted. And people who are captives, and that term is a broad term, it basically means that people are caught up in the world, and, and they're not convinced that doing the best thing is the best thing. That's what it is. Many, a, many an individual has walked by a church where there's a Protestant teaching, and there was deliverance in them for them psychologically and spiritually or psychologically, and, and they didn't take advantage of it. And that's very sad, and that's why we push here. We push. We push this deliverance. We don't casually deal with it. I was talking with someone here the other day. They said, casually deliver. Casually deliver. There's no such thing as casual deliverance. Now, there is evangelism that, that, that can be uh, done uh, in, in a very light manner, in a very casual manner. However, for the most part, evangelism is aggressive. That's why we're called Protestants, because we protest a lot. But we do it in love, and the point is, is that we're not here to be docile all the time. There are times that we, we, we can look at Jude as we leave uh, um, Luke 4.18 here, where Jude, Jude talks about, and the Master does the same thing, talking about two different ways to evangelize. Basically, you, you can come to people in, in a very uh, tough form, or you can come to them in a position of kindness. The job is, is to get through to people. Right? The, the, the job is to get through. And, you know, um, let's take a look at that. You know, methods of evangelism. Let's go to uh, verse 23 of Jude, book 65. And others saved by fear. So, and some have compassion, making a change, a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. And he goes into sin and getting out of sin. Before we get to sin, let's stop first at the first concept. Evangelism is a big part of sound doctrine in this ministry. We have a couple of more categories that get into it also. But it's basically a sound doctrine concept of evangelism and, and, and getting out there and saving souls. And number 24 is big here because it's a war. You're going to go out there and the enemy is not going to be happy that you're taking their property that was given to them essentially in a vague manner. Uh, it, it gets deep in other words. But simply stated uh, that, that, that when Adam and Eve sinned, the whole family was given to the devil. And their children, essentially. Because we don't, when you don't do what God says, he tells you bye-bye. In other words, he's the boss, and as they say here in America, you ain't. And you, need, you need to get that in your head. That's why the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You get smart when you start respecting God for who he is. That's a big part of, of, of winning this War here, number 24 in this ministry. This is a war for you to own your soul, and you're going to own your soul when you develop a fear of the Lord. That's what we're teaching here, okay? I had a category for the fear of the Lord, and I, I put it up in the 50s, but let's let that go for now because I don't want to overcomplicate things. So, so we have deliverance, we just mentioned in, in, in Luke 4, and now we're looking at how you deliver. And that's an evangelical term, correct? Some people you're stern with, and some people you be, you're very caring with. It doesn't matter necessarily how you do it. We're here to get the job done. That's the whole point that Jude's making. 
Then he takes it a step further, saying it's really, really, really important to get boo-boo out of your life ASAP, which is repeated over and over in your Bible, Old Testament and New. It is highly beneficial for you to get the, the garbage out of your life. No matter, what, no matter what kind of garbage it is. But leaving the garbage aside for a moment, the, 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 the one I wanted to point out was that, that, that there are two me me methods, and, and he, he, he mentions in verse 21, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So what does that mean? Now we're back to what, Jeremiah? We're back to living bread? Or, or no, let, let's, let's say this. We're back to the word hope. Okay? And which is number... We have faith, hope, and love. Of course, that's number five in this ministry. Faith, hope, and love. These three should abide. And in many people, they do. Okay, and hope is uh, your strongest expectation, the thing that you're most eager about. And that's what he's referring to there because you're going to really experience God forgiving you when he's in your presence and he's going to really be good to you. That's the point. You think, In other words, you think you've seen the sun, but you ain't seen it shine. That's the point he's making. God's been very favorable to you if you've been a Christian in general, even if you've been in a car accident, even if you've uh, uh, been attacked by Muslims or something or whatever, uh, attacked by Democrats now. Boy, they're really coming after Christians, a lot of these Democrats. But my point is that it doesn't matter who came after you. It, it, the point is that you, you won't experience what Paul calls a down payment of mercy uh, because the Lord is in your heart and you're going through trouble. So it really can't be blessed. That's why the, the Master redefines the word blessed which we went to earlier, which is contextualization and learning how to, to look at words in your Bible and understand the context, which, which I've spent a, a dozen or so videos uh, that are available for you here, talking about contextualization or how words mean things in different places, such as the word blessed. Blessed is not what a lot of people say. I, see, I go to the gym, they say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. They don't really understand the word blessed. It doesn't mean they're not saved or loved. It just means a lot of people have, a, have misconstrued what the term means. They have, they have a, a big Old Testament kind of perspective, and that's not necessarily what blessed is anymore, is it? No. Because the Master just said, blessed are you when you are lied on and basically uh, uh, abused heavily by the world under multiple persecutions, physical, psychological, and otherwise. Now, that's blessed, too. So that ties into this concept, which is mercy and blessed. Um, remember, uh, I'm not going to get into too many uh, tie-ins right now, but uh, your, your Bible ties things in together, and it does it beautifully, and, 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 it, and it makes you uh, become the person that God wants you to be, which is the, the result of some decent Bible teachings, from someone, and you took the time out, and you're going to learn what this Bible is about and what Christianity is about. What Jude is saying here is that the blessed hope is coming to you, and that is real time care. The word mercy in this particular context means that God, forgetting about all of your sin and giving you good things, is coming to you in triplicate. And that, that's, what, that's what we're looking forward to, which is the same thing as looking forward to the blessed hope. We just looked at it in Thessalonians. It's a, and it's the same thing over and over again. It's the same vein in your Bible. That for you to be blessed in heaven is mercy. God knows that you are a sinner, and, and he's still going to give you tons of good things in triplicate. Now, he doesn't know your sins anymore. He doesn't, he doesn't remember your sins anymore. They're, they're far away as the east is from the west. But we, but we will still recognize and acknowledge the fact that you were a sinner of some sort. We, we sing about that. Uh, we, we, we will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Well, what does that mean? We're going to sing about being forgiven uh, forever. That's what it means. And if you sing about being forgiven, you're acknowledging that there was something that, you're being, that you were being forgiven for. 
as far as getting into specifics and feeling sad about your errors, evidently that's going to be basically kind of wiped away there, which is beautiful. Now, while, you, while you're in your human body, you need to use some of your experiences and your forgiveness with other brethren and share your, uh, confess certain sins to other people and to through your pastors and so forth and all of that. Every now and then, especially in your prayer time. But the point is that, I'm putting that aside for a moment, but the bottom line is, is that when you get to heaven, you're going to receive the mercy of God. He, in other words, you, the Bible says that you have received mercy when you're saved, and that's true, right? That means that God is shining on what you've done. Forget about it. I'm going to love you anyway. That's all this is over and over again. That's number four in this ministry. Grace, mercy, peace, and rest. Mercy is number two. It's 4.2. It's very easy. God gave you something even though he knows who you are. There's no need in trying to make yourself look white as snow, and, and I did this, and, and, and I'm, I'm half perfect, or some sort of cult, C-U-L-T, around the corner here. <clears throat> there are many cults around here. Catholicism is a cult. Jehovah's Witnesses is, is a cult. Mormonism is a cult. Scientology is a cult. There's cults everywhere. C-U-L-T. It, it, it means a, a heresy or a perversion of the truth of the, your Bible here. That's why I suggest red letter King James Bibles here. A lot of these Bibles have been written by devils and stuff. You make sure you get King James Red Letter Edition. If you can get it. Keeping yourselves in the, in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Wait a minute, I thought I already had eternal life. Not necessarily. Otherwise he wouldn't say unto eternal life. Furthermore, he said that you're going to have confidence in God and love God, looking for the love of God. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you, you just said I have the love of God. And you want me to keep it. Okay, I understand that. That means hold on to Christianity and stay on the narrow brick road, put, to put it simply. And now you're saying that I'm looking for the love of God? Now stop right there. See, see your Bible gets deep right away. We're having some popcorn right now. And let, let's go to this. This is a very important issue here. This deals with agape, this deals with experiencing God's love, this deals with beauty, this deals with everything and wisdom. And we, we can go all over the place, but let, 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 let's narrow this down. Bottom line is, is that you were supposed to have received love now. Why would he say you're going to get love later? He just said you have the love of God now, and you're looking forward to the love of your Lord Jesus Christ. Well, stop right there. How can I have a love now and look for love later? That goes back to Paul the Apostle, and now we start putting scriptures together a little bit, where he said you have a down payment, but you don't have the full payment. In other words, God's going to give you a little bit of loving right now and, and watch over you and teach you, but you just, you, you ain't seen it shine, as they say here in America. You, you just wait here. You're going to really receive God shining you on for what you've done. That's what that means. Some powerful stuff here from Jude. Most of Jude is talking about negativity, the bad people, they're, they're, they're clouds without rain, and, 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 and they want to uh, come into church and party, they're called libertines. But right here, we, we get into the really heavy stuff from Jude, which is, let's get down to, to what you're going to get. I told you that agape is the, probably the main issue in Christianity. It, 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 it's number one in this ministry. They had a famous soul song here years ago, I Don't Want to Lose Your Love. There you go. That's why he said remain in the love of God, because more is coming to you. That's what he means. Keep yourself in the love of God, because there's a whole lot more coming to you. In the form of mercy, which means he's using the word love, or agape, under the terms of charity, or now it's under the terms of of you getting something you don't deserve, even though God has still acknowledged the fact that you don't deserve it. That's what mercy means. So we can go to Jude for a monster popcorn lesson here, and we're going to move on. Let's go to another card here. 
Let's go to my popcorn bag here. Let's go to Thou Shalt Covet. I have some lessons here on, 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 on how people in America have turned into a falling away of saying they are rich and have need of nothing, Revelations 2 and 3, whereby the, the, Jesus is analyzing the church. And if you don't get your act together, and remember, in, in Revelation chapter 1, Jesus Christ has the keys of hell in his hand, and he's, he's making a point. For those of you who are paying attention to a fifth grade level, he has the keys of hell in his hand. Meaning, get your act together, or good night. That, that's, that's what that means. And, and what is he doing first in, in the book of Revelation? He's revealing himself, and first of all, he's, he's revealing himself to who? Who's the first person? He's doing street cleaning. No, he's doing house cleaning first. Then he's going to go to the street. I'm going to get my house in order, then I'm going to go out to the street. And I'm going to point out a few things. And one of them is, I'm not going to tolerate covetousness, which the master spends a lot of his time on. And let's talk about that for a moment. As we look at the 10th commandment here. You know, the, the idea that people can change the gospel, which is why we call it heresy. It means a twister donut. You're, you're twisting the truth. You can use the word prevarication. There are a lot of terms you can use. But the point is, is that what you're doing is, is you're, you're misrepresenting. A lot of TV guys come on TV, they say it's okay to be rich and be multimillionaires, billionaires, whatever. The Bible doesn't teach that. The master spends a lot of time in very simple eighth grade grammar to expose the fact that he's not going to tolerate riches in general. No matter how, I was talking with Pastor Tom here, a wonderful friend of ours here in the ministry. Um, a big part of our ministry was Pastor Tom here. And, 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 and uh, we were talking, and he was talking about how covetousness may not be necessarily that strict, you know, that cut and dry. And, and I told Pastor Tom, I said, you know, I, I don't want to contradict you, brother, you know, but I'm going to have to uh, part ways with you a little on this one. My understanding of reading this gospel of Jesus Christ is that when you're rich, you can wake up in flames. You, you will, you, there's a very good chance you're going to wake up in flames. Jesus said the rich man woke up in flames. Okay, I, I don't know how you can interpret that any other way. Hoarding and covetousness under the 2,000 year church of Jesus Christ is bad news. It's really bad news. And, and, and I would be very careful equivocating on this subject. I don't agree with obviously people who are rich and very rich in general, and I just can't go along with it. I would be nervous having uh, 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 too many thousands of dollars in your bank here in America, personally. That's me. There are too many scriptures in the, in the New Testament, especially, that point out being rich is bad news. We just looked at James, where he talks about uh, being in fire because you, you were covetous. You're going to wake up and you're going to, you're going to be in flames. James chapter 5, right here. So I, I can't go along with this, you know, you may be in trouble. No, I'm going to tell you that if you're rich, you better watch yourself big time. Uh, uh, go to now, ye rich. Weep and howl for the misery that shall come upon you. In the previous chapter, he says, uh, has not God chosen the poor? Then he goes into being in fire here. Ouch. Same thing the master said. James and the master both get into uh, covetousness rather plainly stated, as far as I know. Now, now may, may there be some sort of flux or some sort of sway with lots of money? I don't know. I, I would probably say there is, but, but it's, it's dangerous territory. It's quite plain. That's my point. I wouldn't play around. I have about 10 videos at least online pertaining to uh, pertaining to uh, riches and covetousness. I call it the greedy bunch. The greedy bunch. That's why we have the falling away and number 58 in this ministry, which is the apostasy. 
one of the main, main components of the apostasy, which is the Laodicean church, which is basically the 20th century and so forth, 21st century, is related to what? It's related to greed. And thou shalt covet. That's, that's it. That's a major component to why they are considered twister donuts and they are considered uh, flunking the class and you're not getting in the door. That's primary criteria. It's very simple. Now, there, there are people who have different opinions about how much and all of this as far as money goes. I would say just don't be rich at all, period. This, in, the, in the conversation, that's me. Pastor Tom was saying that, well, and I, that was my last counsel with a, a Bible teacher. I've had many a counsel, uh, a conversation with, with Bible teachers and, and uh, Christians and so forth uh, on this issue, even online. I think it's clear when you add all the scriptures together that there's a very good chance if you're rich, you're going to wake up in flames, and there's just no way, no way of getting around it. I, you know, that, that's my opinion, you know, and, and, and I hope I'm wrong to a certain extent, but, uh, but uh, that's my take on this, okay? On covetousness. In spite of the fact that Solomon was rich, Abraham evidently had a lot of material material wealth and so forth. Uh, let's just leave that alone because I'm not in the Old Testament. I'm not Abraham, and I'm not. And I, I am a Christian who is going by the text that's right here in front of me, and that makes sense. It makes sense for you to go along with what's in front of you. I'm going to go back to Solomon. You're, you're, you're not. You're not Solomon. Luke chapter 6, uh, woe to those who are rich because you've had your consolation. So, so, so the obvious principle is if for 2,000 years in Christ's church, you just don't want a whole lot of consolation. You don't want it. The word consolation is another word that you can use as a synonym for living sumptuously, which the Lord mentions too, sumptuous living. It's very simple. It's simple grammar. It means you basically don't want to live rich. It's not a good idea. And we're talking especially for those who have uh, frequented the church. And especially for those who have repented and been baptized. Because you actually cannot repent and be baptized when you're rich. Did you know that? And, and let's get into that. We, we, we talk about this quite often. It's a big issue. Uh, I wanted some popcorn feeling here, but we, have, we got something heavy here. Let, let, let's go ahead and finish it out. When you have a lot of money, and you don't liquidate that. You cannot, you can actually, you can't be saved. You, you can't even repent to be baptized. If you do repent and, and you're baptized and you're rich, there's a very good chance that you went through a, a ceremony that never existed. The conversion never happened. Because part and parcel to the conversion is a dumping of sin. That's why the Bible says, make straight ye the ways of the Lord, John the Baptist. Why does the Bible say that? Because everybody has to have a basic uh, um, uh, feast of unleavened bread. Everybody who comes to Jesus Christ. The feast of unleavened bread is not insignificant. You, you can't wash the, because you have the song, uh, just as I am, when you got saved, doesn't mean that you can dump the feast of living bread. You, you can't dump the feast of living bread. It's the first feast of the Hebrews. You cannot dump it just because you're in the New Testament. Oh, I'm in the New Testament. I'm not under the law. Well, you better watch yourself because we are here to tell you to make straight you the ways of the Lord upon repentance. Otherwise, the repentance doesn't exist. Now, I'm not going to get into this too, too much because most people who come to Jesus Christ, he's going to have their life in order. He's going to help them have their life in order. We don't, we don't get saved by ourselves. However, my point is, is that a lot of people will, conf will, will seek to, to, to go to church and, and all of a sudden, the Lord will probably stop them from being converted if they're practicing sin and they don't plan on stopping it or they have lots of money and they're covetous. The, the, the Lord will stop the conversion. He, we have an example of that with the young rich ruler. The conversion was stopped because he was rich. Did you know that? There's another man whose conversion was basically stopped until he gave half of his money to the, the people he robbed or something along those lines. 
at Zacchaeus. Two instances where people had to liquidate in order to be uh, received in the initiation process of repentance and baptism and getting saved. It's very simple grammar, and, and, and it's basically unassailable. Now, as to being having some flux in all of these examples, which are quite obvious, uh, I don't know. I, I'm not God, but I will say this, that it doesn't look good. A rich man can hardly enter the kingdom of God. Okay, wait, wait. How many scriptures do you have to read before you come to that conclusion? I mentioned that the Pastor T, a lovable good friend of ours in this ministry, who is with Jesus Christ right now, and I basically told him that I don't see a lot of flux. But I'm not going to argue about it, and, and, and in many ways I hope I'm wrong. I, I, you know, I don't want anybody to be, go downstairs. But I'm not, I'm not the judge. I, I'm not the person who determines the, the, the absolute criteria. I give you what I, what, what I pretty much know is the criteria, but I'm not the one with the key. And we just looked at uh, Jesus Christ, uh, the, the lovable master here, uh, who was also uh, a tough dude, you might say. He's, he's awfully lovable, but, but, when, but when, when people don't do exactly what he wants them to do uh, at the right time, because he is God and you ain't, you can find yourself hurting. That's the whole point here. That's why he has feet of brass and he has a key in his hand of hell. Because he's going to straighten out the seven churches right now. We're going to find out who's who and who's going to get their act together and who ain't. Who's already, who's already on the road to, to uh, you know, the Philadelphia church. They're already doing very well and, and, and they have the keys to the heaven and, 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 they're, and they're looking good, okay? And then there's another church where there's not a church and it's, they're having problems and they're, you know, they're, they're blah, 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 blah. Well, we're not getting that right now. But the point is, is, that, is that he's going to get it together and he knows, what he, he knows what he wants to do. And one of the big issues is covetousness. It's huge. And some people might get the wrong impression looking at the Old Testament, right? I'll be right back as we get back into my second segment for today. Maranatha. We're bouncing around. This is wonderful. I'll be right back. Maranatha. Maranatha. 